Good morning everyone and welcome back to our channel. We continue with our programming course for numerical control lathes. In our previous session, last time we saw what the initial parameters to set at the beginning of a program are, let us begin discussing axis movement. How does a lathe move? Well, first of all, a lathe moves in a two-dimensional space, so a graph. Two dimensions, one from top to bottom, or better, that travels diametrically across the workpiece, and one that travels longitudinally, approaching from the tailstock towards the spindle or the self-centering chuck, or moving away from it. So if we take our self-centering chuck on which we have, for example, any workpiece, the first axis we need to talk about is, in particular, definitely the z-axis. The z-axis perfectly coincides with the rotation axis of the self-centering chuck or workpiece. So, by programming my z, I will move closer to or further away from the workpiece. Obviously, my tool, which we are currently placing here at a safe distance, will need to move in the z direction, but also up or down, so in the x direction. At this point, we will always align it with the farthest machined face from the workpiece for convenience. Let's also indicate the x-axis. What we have drawn is nothing other than a Cartesian coordinate system, neither more nor less than in Battleship where we say A3 and go to B3, or C3 or C4, to intersect with two parallel lines at the meeting of the two coordinates because A and 4 are two coordinates, the same reasoning. If we want to move point by point, we do it on lathes. Coordinate Z expressed in millimeters and coordinate X expressed in millimeters, but transformed into diameters. What does that mean? It means that if my tool goes from Z100 to Z50, my tool has actually traveled approximately 50 millimeter. However, remember that if you move the tool from X200 to X100, your tool has actually traveled, that is physically, 50 millimeters, millimeters, precisely, because the X coordinates are expressed in millimeters, nothing prevents the manufacturer from giving you a lathe that moves radially, but I assure you it is much more complicated because the parts are measured in diameter, okay, so, as you have noticed, our coordinate system is made up of four quadrants. My son, who is in elementary school, is teaching me that two lines that intersect perpendicularly divide the plane into four equal parts at right angles. Which one do we use? We use quadrant one. So, lathe programs, except for some special cases, like the bar feeder or with the counter spindle, are always programmed in positive x and negative z. Why is this? Because relative to the intersection, which we will call the origin of the two axes, the movements that go to the right in z are positive, z plus. So here we have one, two, three, four. To the left of the origin, the movements are negative. So we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. The same goes for x. Relative to the origin and going upwards, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Relative to the origin and downwards, we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. So, if I say... Let's take a moment to clean up. Let's evaluate only quadrant one, 
the one that concerns us, X, Z, origin. When I talk about origin, I mean X0. Here we have our millimeters, which can also be expressed in decimal, hundredth, and thousandth values. So I don't have to program 123 necessarily, but also 1.5, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. The machine also reads in thousandths, even though the precision of the lathe is in the hundredths. So if I need to go to diameter 5 at Z minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I draw a line, Z minus 2, 1, 2. I draw a line. This is point x5, z, minus 2. From here, if I want to move to z, minus 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I already anticipate that it will be enough to tell the machine z minus 10 without specifying x, if it was specified in the previous block, the machine will move horizontally to Z minus 10. Now I want to make an inclined trajectory. So to X10, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Z minus 15, then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I will specify both coordinates and the machine will make this movement. Okay, this is to learn how to move within our Cartesian axis system. Here you can have fun and really enjoy drawing a square. So a little interesting exercise to do at the end of the video. Draw a square. You determine the points do it. In a normal Cartesian axis system, without thinking that x is a diameter, but simply thinking that x is just in millimeters, make yourselves a triangle. The same goes for trying to move with squares within the Cartesian coordinate system. You will see that it is not so difficult. In programming, there is really nothing difficult. It is just a matter of understanding how to move quickly or slowly in an orthogonal manner, that is vertically or horizontally, or to perform a circular movement. If someone doesn't know, they might say, oh, how do I make a circular movement? You will see that it is not so complicated. Let's start by addressing a series of discussions of this kind. So, when I move the control axis of a lathe, such as this one, the first thing I need to do is indicate to the lathe whether it should reach a point in rapid movement or in working movement that means being in contact with its tool. Well, if I want to move rapidly, there will be the suffix G00, often abbreviated as G0, and it is the same thing. Yes. I, I program G0, 0, X, Z, whatever they are, and then other movements in X, Z, in X, Z, only in X, or in Z. All these movements, block by block, will be executed rapidly until the machine finds G0, G, 0, 1, or G02, G03, what is G01? G01 is linear interpolation in working movement, so X, Z, F, which stands for feed. The feed rate is expressed in millimeters. As mentioned earlier in the previous video, we programmed G95. It is expressed in millimeters 
per minute if we have programmed G94. These G95 and G94 can be changed at any time within the program. Okay, so I have my workpiece. I'm here, far away at some point because I just turned on the machine. My workpiece has a diameter of 100 and I want to move to this point. We have our X and I want to move 2.5 a meter above the workpiece at Z. What will I write? So, two schools of thought, two habits, two things to do. I write G0, X105, Z0. The machine will quickly go to this point. Two schools of thought in what sense? Some machines will run the axes to arrive with the fastest trajectory. Other machines, on the other hand, make the axes run at their maximum power. So if the z-axis is closer, the path could be this. This is why I always recommend always performing rapid approaches safely for safety in two blocks. So a rapid approach that will have done g0, z0, x0. From 105, what will the machine do from here? Wherever it is, it will do this. First it will go to Zezro. Then it will go to 105. First it will go to Zezro. Then it will go to 105. First it will go to Zezro. Then it will go to 105. You want to be absolutely sure that your colleague hasn't left the machine here. So Zezro collision G0, X300. Z0, X105. Your colleague left the machine here. The machine will do this. Let's do it here. Tick, 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 tick. Safety guaranteed. 100%. Okay. When you program, in. G1. The machine will always move along the shortest trajectory. So it will never do something like this. But it will move like this. So, so, so. Okay, so our piece that wants to be faced will first require a whole series of parameters, which are the modal instructions we have seen, spindle rotation, speed limit, and so on. This process involves setting up various parameters that are crucial for the operation, including but not limited to the spindle rotation speed, which is a key factor in ensuring the efficiency and safety of the operation. Additionally, we need to consider the speed limit which is essential to prevent any potential damage to the equipment or the workpiece. Furthermore, the modal instructions we have seen are vital in guiding the operation to achieve the desired outcome. Let's do it. So let's write a small facing program. 100 equals 100, G92S2000 to prevent our piece from spinning at infinite speed when we get here. G95 to set millimeters per revolution. M42 rapid gamma T. Now, let us proceed to write a concise yet comprehensive facing program that will effectively execute the task at hand. Hero. One. Zero. One. You can enter one with correction. One. Don't be scared when you hear about correction. I'll explain it to you. Be patient. In the meantime, you can get familiar with these codes. M4. S300. G96. If you're wondering if the order of these three codes in the same line can be varied, the answer is yes, as long as all three are present. So, what do I tell it? Rotate. Clockwise at 300 meters per minute. So, 300 becomes meters per minute, because it is followed by G96. Then I start in rapid G00, X, 300. So the machine will move to X300. I won't repeat it. G96, 
Geo zero is not needed, but if I repeat it, it won't hurt. Z zero X one oh five Z zero X one oh five at this point G one X zero F O three So actually, I'll tell you already, X should be less than half the radius of the tool you are using. Okay, I mean less, pardon, the radius of the tool you are using. So if you are using a tool radius of 0 0.8 when facing, you should always go to X 0 0.8. Otherwise, you'll have a point here. This is something we will address later when we talk about the pieces ratio. So from here, working at 3 tenths per revolution, 3 tenths per revolution is determined by FO3 in conjunction with G95. Our machine will start facing. Once I get here, I will return to G00, and I can decide the path to take. There. X3 enter. Z2 enter. So in rapid, I go to Z10, rise to X300, and return to Z200. This is a simple facing program that, if you remember it, you can also copy it, so that every time you just do a copy and paste, simply varying it. This dimension, excuse me, this one yes, but this one we will go to face our piece. For now, we have made some linear movements, nothing exaggerated. Next time, we will start to look closely at linear interpolations, along with circular interpolations, and then we will see direct programming and angle programming. So we will start to do, perhaps forgetting all this area here, programming for paths of this type. Okay, so paths that have a real profile. I try to make videos that are not too long, with a few well-distributed concepts. To allow you to follow the topic little by little, then when I publish them, maybe you can watch two or three. I also hope this time I was clear enough. If you liked it, as always, a like and a share on your social media would be appreciated. I look forward to the next video and thank you for your attention. Have a great day everyone.